welcome to the commentary booth where we watch and you guessed it commentate on the week that was in movies and tv i'm your host and play-by-play -play commentator jamie Abt, and each week i'll be joined by a rotating cast of color commentators to help you find your next viewing treat this week i'm joined by some very special guest hosts uh, they are members of the superstar pop group shepherd welcome to the commentary booth amy george and emma Good to be here. Thanks for having us. How's our life at the moment? It's rainy. It's a bit cold for November here in Australia, but uh, yeah, we're doing well, man. We're doing well. How about you? Yeah, it's not too bad. It just started raining here as well, actually. Nice. Are you in Brisbane or whereabouts are you? Uh, so I'm south of Sydney, about an hour and a half south of Sydney. Okay, cool. Yep. Nice. Um, so we're here today to chat about the, the newest single, Christmas Without You, uh, your upcoming live performances at the Lord Mayor's Christmas Carols in Brisbane. And then we'll also close out the, the show with a little bit of discussion about your favourite Christmas movies since it's the festive season now and it ties in with the song. Perfect. Sounds good. So we'll just dive right in. Why did you want to create a Christmas themed song this year? Um, it's been on our bucket list for quite a while. You know, we keep getting asked by our friends and, and you know, managers, labels, families, like, when are you guys going to do a Christmas song? When are you guys going to do a Christmas song? Um, and I figured like, you know, it would make sense for Shepard to do a Christmas song. Um, and for some reason this year just felt like the right year to do it. We've been separated from our dad for the last two years. He's been um, working overseas, so he hasn't been able to come home. Um, and this will be our second Christmas without him. And I guess that's kind of where it, it initially began. That was the inception of the idea. Um, and we decided to write a Christmas song, an original Christmas song about people that are stuck either overseas or, or you know, one of their loved ones can't be there for Christmas. Because um, it's a very, it's a special time of year, but it's also a very challenging time of year for a lot of people that, just kind of have this happiness thrust into their face constantly when they uh, actually have a reason not to be so happy. So yeah, it's a, it's a challenging time of year for a few people and, and we wanted to write a song for them. Especially like this year and where it doesn't, it's not just people that are internationally separated. It can just be within Australia as well. Yeah, exactly. Like someone in Byron Bay from Brisbane and up, up until recently might have well, might as well have been in Paris. <laughs> um do you have like Christmas songs that sort of influence this decision and how, how you went about this song? I don't think we had Christmas songs in particular that influenced it, but we have seen a lot of our, I guess, um, friends and people in the, our peers in the industry um, releasing Christmas songs and they always do seem to do bring a lot of joy for their fans. So I think we were finally convinced that we wanted to do something for our fans. Uh, this year but every time we have tried to write, write a Christmas song in the past it just hasn't felt genuine because obviously a lot of Christmas songs involve snow and Santa and reindeers and I think we just just couldn't relate to that being in Australia um, so this is the first year that we've had something to actually write about that we actually that is meaningful to us and it's still full of snow <laughs> yeah, there, there is a bit of snow in there but um, it has a nice amount of Christmas yeah. touch yeah yeah I think it, we just managed to get the balance just right. Yep. And so, yeah, Christmas songs are becoming a lot more popular and trendy now. Do you think this might become a yearly tradition for Shepherd moving forward? I think it could. Um, but if we're again, lucky. If, yeah, <laughs> again, it would have to definitely come from a meaningful place and not just um, because we want to jump on the bandwagon of Christmas. Yep. Yeah, it all, it all comes from the fans, really. So if this is something that resonates with people and... Um, they sort of they get the vibe we were going for. Um, and yeah, they sort of, it helps them emotionally sort of get through a, a bit of a difficult time. Then I think that's where the staying power will be. Okay. And off the back of this release, you are going to be performing at the Lord Mayor's Christmas Carols in Brisbane at the River Stage. Uh, how are you feeling ahead of that performance? Uh, yeah, I mean, we're, we're very honoured. It's a, it's a huge event here in Brisbane I know that uh you know people have been coming to this since they were little kids like we've got friends that are actually buying tickets and they're like we can't believe you guys play this this is something we go to every year um it's a very big honor so I think even more so this year just because we've kind of been able to perform much um 
So I think the vibe in the uh, room stage will be quite magical. Mm. Uh, are there any particular Christmas songs that you're looking to perform other than your own, obviously? Yeah, I think for the Lord Mayor's carols, we're doing um, War Is Over. So Happy Christmas by John Lennon and Yoko Ono. We're doing our own version of that. And then we'll um, yeah perform our own Christmas single. So we get uh, two moments on stage, which is nice. Uh, and then with the country sort of beginning to reopen and touring coming back, are we, uh, should we be expecting to see Shepherd touring around the country shortly? Yeah. I mean, I, there's a, there's a tour in the works. It hasn't been announced yet, but uh, hopefully we can announce that early in the new year. And then, um, yeah, we, we obviously really want to get around Australia and do a national tour because we've only been able to play in Queensland for the last two years. Um, so that'd be nice to be able to get over to Perth and, and Melbourne and, and Adelaide and all these places we haven't been to in, in years. Um, but we also really want to look at international as well. We've, we've got um, a potential tour of Europe booked for the middle of next year. So fingers crossed that goes ahead because um, I know that they're not doing too well at the moment with cases over there. So it's just one of those situations where, where we've got plans in motion, um, but nothing that has been locked in 100% yet because of obvious reasons. How difficult has that been for all of you sort of being stuck in Queensland for the last 18 months or so? We have been lucky in Queensland. I was going to say, we've been pretty lucky and we've, we've still been able to do, you know, the grand final and um, state of origin and, and some pretty special shows, still being able to release an album here to our album launch. So I'd say we've, we've been pretty lucky. In but, terms of places to be stuck. Yes. Yeah. Queensland has been very lovely. Uh, but yeah, I think it's, it's time. We've, we've got that itch. We need to sort of start traveling again. I'm sure that everybody feels the same way, um, particularly in the music industry. You know, we, just, we can't wait for that opportunity to get out there and see all of our beautiful fans again and be uh, on stage in front of audiences around the world. I mean, that's kind of what we live for. So we can't wait for that to open up again. Oh yeah, I guess, especially with being so used to doing that so often, it would be very, a big change. Yeah. I mean, it was for the first six months, it was like, yeah, we get to stay at home. This is fun. You know, we get a bit of a break. And then we very quickly realized it was not a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Once, once it got past that couple of first couple of months. Yeah. The novelty phase wore off pretty quick. And then since we're sort of in the festive spirit and the commentary booth is all about our favorite movies and TV shows, uh, do you have a favorite movie, Christmas movie, each of you? Um, I know what Emma's is. The Grinch. <laughs> <laughs> that is a classic. That's my favorite. But I actually watched Bad Santa, which is not um, PG rated, <laughs> but it's hilarious. How about you? Uh, I can't go past Home Alone. I think that's just the ultimate Christmas movie. Um, yep. So much fun. Um, fun for all ages. So I would say definitely Home Alone, either one or two. I like them both. Um, I love Elf. I think it's hilarious. And I could watch it all year round. Yeah, three great choices. Do you, have you had a chance to watch the the newest Home Alone? No. Sorry, <coughs> just come again. There's there's the a newest brand new, Home Alone. Yeah, there's a brand new Home Alone on Disney Plus now. I was just talking to a friend the other day, saying they could never Home Alone is the one movie that you can't actually remake or or continue <laughs> the franchise because all it. All it takes is the kid who's got his own phone to be like, hey, you left me at home. Yep. And then the parents come back. <laughs> so yep. how are they going to do that? They, okay, they well, have I'll done just, it. I'll so have to check it out. There you go. There's something to watch this Christmas. Have you seen it? I haven't yet. It's on my plans this weekend to, to review in a couple of weeks. So we'll see okay. if, it, if it lives up to one and two. Well, then you have the risk of um, ruining one and two. Ruining Christmas. <laughs> That's, that, that's my big concern, ruining Christmas. That is the <laughs> Silly movie. Um, do, you, do you have a preference over one or two? Is there any that you prefer? Um, it's, a, it's a tough one. I mean, I think it's one of those movies where the sequel, it was just as good as the original. Um, I think New York, Lost in New York was, was a bit more of an adventure. You know, it was something that it wasn't just at home. He got to go out and be in a hotel and as a kid 
I just remember, you know, the idea of having your parents' credit card and just being able to order room service nonstop and, um, yeah, go to all the cool toy stores in, in New York City. I think that was um, just a sort of step up for me, just I, getting I to imagine all that stuff as a kid. I guess you kind of get to live a little bit of that experience now when you go for a tour. Yeah, a little bit. Actually, my first my first ever trip to New York City was on my own. So I definitely felt that vibe of, of being little Kevin McAllister walking around New York City, just going, wow, FAO Schwartz, the toy store. And I, I think I did spend all my money. <laughs> uh, and then what is it about the Grinch and Elf that you feel make those movies that people need to watch every year? Um, this class, yeah, they're just funny and easy to watch and um heartwarming at the same time um i mean jim carrey and will ferrell is mm. just a powerhouse of leading comedy actors yeah i think it's just the uh, the comedy in it that makes me love it so much and christmas is such a special time but it is even more so when you like get to experience it in america or um england they because it's snowing and it's cold and they put so much more effort into it whereas in australia it's a bit like oh so watching these movies kind of makes you feel like you're there and yeah, enjoying Christmas more. Living the magic. Yeah. Yep. Uh, and then obviously the, the big controversial one, I want to get some opinions here, is Die Hard a Christmas movie? Yes. <laughs> it's like the, the most action-y Christmas movie, but I, I think so. Don't ask me. I haven't, you haven't seen it. You haven't seen it. <laughs> oh, good. I get, the, I get the full monopoly on the decision here. Yes, the, it is. The full casting vote. <laughs> Uh, so then where, just to close out, where's the best place for people to stay up to date with tour dates and track your creative journey moving forward? I think our Instagram is probably the place we're most active or uh, we've got a, uh, a, a Facebook group called The Flock where, you know, we're always on there interacting with our fans and posting tour dates, posting any new merch that comes out. We're just sort of very, very interactive on that on that platform, Facebook, um, the, the flock it's called. Otherwise at We Are Shepherd on Instagram. Okay, perfect. Alrighty, thank you all for taking the time to chat with me today and good luck with the performances at the River Stage on December 11th and have a very Merry Christmas. No problem at all. Thank you. you Thanks thank for you. the chat. Awesome. Take thank care. You. Bye. Thank you for listening to the commentary booth. If you enjoyed the show, please remember to rate, review, and subscribe on podcast services, YouTube, and twitch.tv forward slash jammyupmedia. You can follow me on social media at jammyupmedia and at Perio Magazine. You can check out Shepherd over on social media at We Are Shepherd. You can listen to their new single, Christmas Without You, available now on all streaming services. And then catch them performing at the Lord Mayor's Christmas Carols in Brisbane on December 11th. The Commentary Booth is a fan-funded production of Jam Me Up's Media. You can support the podcast alongside our magazine, Pario Magazine, at Patreon on patreon.com forward slash Jam Me Up's Media. The following people supported at the community support group level or higher, and you cannot fathom how incredibly appreciative we are for their support. Brian and June Hart, Blake Robinson, Courtney Paulson, Jackson Carr, and Tracy Ash.